everyone, welcome to Curtain Call. I'm Kevin Curtin. I'm here today in New York City with two very special guests. Now these gentlemen sitting next to me are two of the greatest writers and producers in Motown and music history. They're Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, they're number one hit makers, and they got a brand new book out called Come and Get These Memories. Make sure you check that out. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to the legendary Brian and Eddie Holland of Holland Dozier Holland. Gentlemen, thank you Please so much for you. being on the show. Thank you, sir. Appreciate thank it. Thank you for having us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's an honor. So, you know, let's get right into this. If you guys can take me back to growing up in Detroit and really, you know, kind of when you first found that love for music and how it all kind of came together um, to want to pursue a career in music. Well, I'll speak for myself while Brian is, is kind of going over. Uh, deliberating, right. <laughs> sure. Because that's, that's somewhat of a complicated yeah. thing. Mm. See, because we grew up in a musical, a musical family. My uncle had stacks and stacks of records, you know, mm. all kinds, big bands, uh, jazz singers, Nat, from Nat King Cole to Bing Cosby, you name it. He loved music, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so we grew up in that type of family. My grandmother, our grandmother, was she was, um, kept us in church. She loves the, 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 the spiritual music, mm -hmm. you know. But she did not interfere with us right. occasionally looking at secular music mm -hmm. as long as it... No, no, go on. He just brought back a memory. Uh -huh. What you said, she never interfered. Right. I just remember she never interfered. Never. Wow. That's unbelievable. It was. Yeah. As strong as she was about, right, 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 about, music. about religion, period. She, yeah. she didn't care for the blues, because I didn't care for the blues. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the only type of music I didn't didn't understand as a growing up as a kid, you yeah. know, five, six, seven. I didn't care for their music because I couldn't make sense out of it. Sure. But the but the rhythm and blues R and B records we love the the, mm -hmm. the uh, Clyde McFadders and and the, and the, and the Jackie the, Wilson Jackie Wilson the Flamingos. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was another group always. The, uh, I can't think of the name of it. Them, but the, 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 the typical R and B groups, yeah. you know. Uh, you know, we just grew up with well, that. the Moon Glows was a good one. Moon yeah. Glows, right. it was, you know, and we just, you know, it, it, it was in us. It's in our blood, okay? Yeah. Then the thing about it, uh, my brother was gifted with the same ear my grand, his grand, our grandfather was gifted with. Yeah. You know, so he had this exceptional ear and ability to hear music. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter, he did, he did his ear developed, I guess not not even knowing. He, he, I, don't, I don't know how... I was amazed, yeah. you know, because mm -hmm. uh, like uh, we would have always have the, the, the groups the string, singing on the street corner, sure. the different groups we had, uh, in, mm -hmm. you know, we, you get, you know, you get a you're part of the group, we would go on these group battles and different things. We would go yeah. to the theaters that always had uh, a lot of uh, uh, entertainment where you were, they were auditioning, you know what sure. I mean? But the fact of the matter is, I can remember at age, you know, like 14 years old, and how adept my brother was to, to yeah. setting out the harmonies. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I would tell some of the older guys that who had problems with the harmonies that I said, oh, I said, my brother can help you with that. And they, I didn't know him, but they looked at me. Yeah. And uh, they said, well, how old is he? I said, he's 14. They said, oh, man, no way, no way. But I knew he could. Mm. How he could do it, I don't know how he did wow. it. Wow. Okay. But it just—it was just amazing. For an example, you know, and yeah. I'm, I'm gonna quickly hit that. And, and, and is that we had a cousin also that mm -hmm. had a really good ear, much older than us, was teaching us, you know, music because we had a group. I had to hear this thing two or three times, to re and I, but I remember. I didn't really know it mm -hmm. by ear, but mm -hmm. I could—I had to could retain my memory. My brother would never hear it. But my uncle, but my cousin, our cousin, was impressed mm. that although he didn't show my brother the note, when he changed the chord, my yeah. brother heard it wow. and changed on his own. Mm. And that impressed my cousin. You wow. know, I didn't know at the time yeah. it was impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, my cousin kept looking at him, looking at him, and he said, well, he has a good ear, he has a good ear, because he yeah. could hear that. <laughs> I didn't know whether he had a good ear or not, but sure. my, my cousin did. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, it was just, and then you understand something. 
The schools had music in it. Mm -hmm. One of the most important things. The yeah. schools, the elementary schools, intermediate schools, high schools, they all had music class that teach you to read and play whatever instrument you want. So it was all it was just a music city period. So at what point did you get hooked up with Barry? When did you meet Barry? And then when did you meet Lamont? And was that around the same time or was that you know, how did that well, all let, come let, together? Well, let me put, let me take the first one first, and my brother can can can, or, yeah. can 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 answer the second one because I'm awfully accused of doing too much talking and not giving him a shit and a chance. That's you know? fine with me, though. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Uh, first of all, I met Barry Gordy by accident. Mm. You know, I was going to school when I was 14, 15 years old. I wanted to be an accountant. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, for various different reasons, you know. Um, I uh, had no intentions of actually doing music because I was thinking, well, who the hell does music? You know what I mean? You know, yeah. It was something you entertain, you have fun with. Mm. But um, I, um, my, I had a friend that um, asked me to go on an audition with him. You know, I didn't want to go. I, I came up with every excuse, you know not to go because I didn't want to go. You know, mm -hmm. we had we didn't have cars, we had to catch the bus, but, but that was a way of life. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I made him some excuse. He said, oh, I want you to go with me. I'll pay this, I'll pay your bus fare. I'll pay the bus fare. And yeah. I, oh God. I mean, I had the money. I just did not want to go. You know? <laughs> gotcha. And so I went with him mm -hmm. to see uh, this this person who was, was managing the theaters. Uh, all I know is that his name was Mr. Jones, mm -hmm. you know. And my friend uh, was singing because he, you know, he wanted me to be with him there for support or whatever. Yeah. So he sang for Mr. Jones, and Mr. Jones said, "Okay," and he said, "Well, let me hear you sing," which caught me off guard mm -hmm. because I wasn't there to sing. Right. You know, and he said, uh, and so I started singing this song, "Christmas in Heaven," mm -hmm. because I only really knew two songs, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, one of them was was uh, Christmas in Heaven, sure. which my uncle had bought the record by the Dominoes. Okay, and yeah. he and he was impressed always with Jackie Wilson sure. because he was married to Jackie Wilson's cousin okay. at the time. Okay. Yeah. So he would play this Jackie, you know, the, the song Christmas in Heaven. So I just listened to it. I would learn it. You know, I didn't think it was a big deal. You know, yeah. you know, I mean, but at the time, uh, I didn't know it, but no one else could sing Jackie Wilson's songs. Yeah. I didn't know it, mm -hmm. you know? And I mean, it, so I, often I would be around guys that were, me, I, in my opinion, were much better singers than I, mm -hmm. but for some reason they couldn't sing the Jackie Wilson songs. Yeah. To me, they were easy, yeah. you know? And uh, maybe it was because I, my, my favorite, one of my favorite singers was Mario Alonso, maybe that was the reason why. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so I sung, and the guy, oh, okay, okay. After I did about maybe 12 bars or yeah. 16 bars, mm -hmm. okay. So I'm getting ready to turn around and walk off. He said, wait a minute. He said, where are you yeah. going? He said, uh, take this contract and give it to your mother. Yeah. And I felt kind of, I was numb. I mean, I said, well, you give wow. it to me, a contract? I, I wasn't, and I said, well, hey, you know, I was. I didn't look for one, but he's asking me. Yeah. And I looked at my friend, him my friend was kind of, he, he looked kind of empty, you know shot. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And so I took it and we got back on the bus and wow. went back and he, he didn't say anything to me all the way until yeah. I got to my stop and I said, I said, um, I said, okay, I said, I'll see you later. Because I was feeling bad sure. because he wanted the contract, right. you know, right. I could care less, you know. Yeah. And so I said, he said, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I just got off the bus. <laughs> so you get the contract. When do you guys meet Barry? Then I'm getting to that. Okay. okay then sure. This the the uh, uh, the guy that was supposed to be my manager. Yeah. He wanted he taken me to someone uh, that was a pianist mm -hmm. and that would play the song Laura. Okay. You know, and I, I to me Laura. I said Laura. Well, that's corny. I mean, I didn't, you know, I said, Laura, I mean, you know, Laura, I said, well, yeah. Jesus Christ, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm listening to this, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now what you gonna do? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean it's in yeah. that stuff. But anyway, uh, <laughs> mm. 
So I was just, it was simply boring me out of my skull, you know. And so he looked at me, he said, well, he said, listen, take this address down. Mm -hmm. I want you to go see Barry Gordy. I didn't know about Barry Gordy. I, I never really, yeah. I didn't really hear of ba Barry mm -hmm. Gordy. You know, I said Barry Gordy. He said, "Yeah, Barry Gordy. You know, he he, he, he writes he write songs. You know, mm. for, you know, he had songs for Jackie Wilson and things like that." And so I said, "Okay." So I went to Barry's house. I got on the bus the next yeah. day, two days later, whatever. Mm -hmm. Went by Barry's house, knocked on the door. Barry came to the door. And he looked at me and said, can I help you? I said, well, yeah, I'm looking for Barry Gordy. He said, well, I'm Barry Gordy. So I looked at yeah. him I said, well, Mr. Jones sent me here to get a song. Mm -hmm. So Barry looked puzzled. He looked at me. He said, song? I said, yes. He said, well, I, we, I don't write songs for just for different people. I, don't, yeah. I, I only write songs for people that I manage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he's paused, I paused, and he's looking for me to say okay and walk away. And I didn't. Mm -hmm. I just looked. And he looked at me. We looked at we were looking at each other. And he found yeah. he was uncomfortable at this moment. So he said, Well, uh, come on in. You know, which is this is what I yeah. wanted. I wasn't there. Yeah. To, to to you know, just to meet him and walk away it was that. Yeah. So I went in, he said, well, what do you, he said, you, what kind of songs do you sing? Yeah. I said, well, I know this song, Christmas in Heaven. <laughs> he <laughs> said, is that a Jackie Wilson song? Yeah. I said, well, yeah. He mm -hmm. said, did you sing Jackie Wilson songs? I said, well, yeah. Mm. So he started playing it. And on I the started, piano. And on the piano. Wow. And I started singing it. Mm -hmm. And his eyes got big, and his, his, his sisters, and his other relatives, it was they were upstairs in the house. Yeah. They start coming out oh, to the great. balcony and they start looking yeah. in and they were all and I was just I just Were just you stopped. nervous at all? No, I wasn't no. nervous. Yeah, I just kept singing. So wow. he looked at me, he said, Wow, he said, Okay. So anyway, yeah. He just told me he that uh well, you know, we went to the Mr. Jones thing. He said, Well, okay, but I got I'm going to a theater and move and move for which yeah. was Janie Finney at the time, mm -hmm. his, 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 his friend of his that wrote songs. Sure. So she you know she wrote money. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, I sit down, he talked to me a little bit. He said, yeah, he said, he said you're different than I thought you were. Mm. You know, and uh, he said, uh, he said, I, I, said well, I kind of looked at it. He said, I, he said, I thought you were going to be arrogant and have an attitude. He mm -hmm. said, but you didn't. You're very, very down to earth. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> he said, he said, but you're not. You're very, very down to earth. Sure, you know? sure. So mm -hmm. anyway, he said, well, we're going to a theater. I said, okay. Mm. So I sit there. <laughs> so when J.D. came, he said, okay, well, I'm going to get him ready to the theater. I said, okay. He looked at me. I looked yeah. at him. He said, um, he said, stop feeling uncomfortable again. He said, well, yeah. you want to go? I said, yeah. <laughs> wow. And so I went with him. So anyway, we started getting together and started rehearsing for different songs. And I was telling him about my brother, Brian. Yes. He said, yeah. He said, well, your brother. He, I, yeah. said, I said, my brother's really musical, blah, blah, blah. I want you to meet him. I mm -hmm. want you to see him. Sure. You know, now at, at first, my brother, my, my brother, sure. he, uh, he, we, he, you know, we always tease back and forth, and Barry didn't understand our sense of humor. Mm -hmm. So he, he said, Ben, your brother gonna be, he gonna really be a star, man. He gonna blah, 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 blah. So my, mm. my, my brother was, had told me what he said late. I told, he said, oh man, he gonna be nothing, man. He gonna be nothing. <laughs> so Barry was taken back yeah. and didn't like that. Mm -hmm. So he, was, he took offense to it. But I really, I knew it was my brother was just talking in the yeah. defensive mode, so sure. I didn't pay any attention. You know? sure. He said, I don't know if I like him or not, man. I don't know if I like him or not. Yeah. Because of what he said, I, I said to myself, please. <laughs> yeah, it didn't, you know, face sure. me. So anyway, my brother mm -hmm. to then met Barry Gordy and start, he was in high school, yeah. start skipping school mm -hmm. to do his music wow. with Barry. And they were rehearsed because he, because Barry Gordy was giving him mm -hmm. a, a further education. Yeah about music mm -hmm. and my brother was picking this stuff up picking this stuff because again he was playing by ear i don't know how my brother learned as much about chords and yeah. disc notes sevenths and i don't know where he learned that stuff from yeah. i still don't 
But I knew that I couldn't do it. I knew mm -hmm. I didn't have a feel for it. But anyway, that's what so he meant. So, Brian, Barry. was everything by ear for you, or did you, you know, no, did by, you read music as well? No. Was all, everything was by ear. Everything was by everything ear. Everything was wow. by ear, right? Wow, unbelievable. Yeah, right. So, can you guys take me to the point where you meet Lamont and you really start getting going on writing songs and really, well, start, you know? I met Lamont through his wife, um, and and Doja. Sure. And uh, she was with, working with another company. I mean, she was working with Motown. Sure. And Lamont was with another company, and mm -hmm. uh, and she said that the company was going to close down because they went out of business, and um, and Lamont was going to come over to Motown. I said that'd be great. She said, but I want you to meet him. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, fine, I'll meet him. And so Lamont came over, and he was down in the studio playing a song. Yeah. And um, I said, man, I like that song, man. Well, let me, can I help you finish that song? Mm -hmm. And then he and I started collaborating on the song. Mm -hmm. So that's basically how we first met. You know? yeah. yeah. When you guys all got together, was it instant chemistry? Was the chemistry just... You well, know, immediately there. Well, let me let me just explain like this. Yeah. Again, I was singing. Yeah. I was interested in recording. Sure. And so I just so I had you know and eventually 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 you know got a hit record uh, yeah. called Jamie. So it went you know pop pop top thirty. So I started you know experiment going to theaters and sure. you, know, you know getting getting a feel for it. Mm -hmm. uh, singing on stage which I didn't like yeah and they all thought I was stage fright and whatever I was never stage fright I didn't like it yeah it was it was like I was put on display yeah and I was a very intricate and private person so I'm saying what and I remember being on Apollo yeah. Theater <laughs> really and, yeah and I looked wow. and I was looking out in the audience and I said to myself I was singing the song mm -hmm. and I was saying to myself I said yeah. what the hell am I doing up here Wow, you know, and I just kept singing, wouldn't miss the beat. But anyway, yeah. Royalty time came. I got my royalty statement. I'm looking yeah. to, to have money. Yep. You owe. You made X about a dollar. Ba 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 ba. But you owe because of recordings and because of this, because sure. of that. You still owe us X amount of dollars. I said. I'm scratching my head. What, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, my brother, he was, he was, he was on we right, right in front of, uh, of the, the Hitsfield. Sure. And he he took his out his paper out, looking at it. He he had a gleeful look on his face. And he's looking at it. I said, Ryan. I said, Well, did you did you get any money? He said, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I don't know how many thousands of dollars it was, yeah. you know, and he was, he was a teenager still, yeah. Yeah. you know, and uh, I said, what? I said, let me see that. Wow. <laughs> so he brought the check. I yeah. said, let me see the statement. <laughs> he brought it to me. I looked at it. I said yeah. to myself, I said, man, I'm in the wrong business. Yeah. I said, I got, I said, Forget I being an accountant. I said, I'm doing this music. Well, it wasn't so much as that. Sound, I don't want to sing. I don't want to do it anyway. Yeah, but exactly. not really. I was just saying to make a living. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought mm -hmm. make a quick way to make money because that's sure. what I was at. Sure. So I said, um, wow. I took off, I, after I said two years away from Motown, my brother said it wasn't two years, although I was working on the song for two years. Yeah. He said, it may be a year went by and then I would stay away from the company and come mm -hmm. back, you know, every periodically. He was, I thought, I thought about it, he was right, you yeah. know. But I wasn't really into it. Sure. Because, but I would just come around, whatever, to do maybe as some kind of a mm -hmm. dub in on a song that somebody had me to do or whatever. Yeah. But I really wasn't into it. I was right, learning how to write songs. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I said, I'm going to learn how to write songs. Said, yeah. And so I would go to different people because at that time, I was about 18 years old, I had gotten married. Uh, and, I, and and the girl that I was married to, she wrote poems, mm -hmm. and I didn't know anything about writing poems. So that's so I asked her. I said, "Well, I said, I said, well, do you know how to write poems? I said, how do you how do you write how do you poems? Do? Yeah. You know." Yeah. And so she gave me example, example, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so it, it still was foreign to me. 
And so what I did, I took two of Smokey Robinson's songs, which I thought was to me was he was a genius yeah. song, and I still think he is. Yes, a he genius, is. you know, mm -hmm. songwriter. And I wrote his songs down on a piece of paper, one after the other, just two. Mm -hmm. And I studied it, and I said, wow. I said, this guy is really, really good, because I could see how he was putting it together. Yeah. I said, it would take me all my life to learn to write like this. Yeah. I said, I don't have all my life to do. I said, I have to find another way to write songs. Mm -hmm. And it can't be his way, because I can't, it's too, his yeah, way. you don't want to be a copycat. No, I'm going to be a copycat. Yeah. I wouldn't have had the ability to learn. Sure. Heck with copycat. If I could do it, I would do it. Yeah. But I couldn't. Yeah, gotcha. It was too sophisticated gotcha. for me. Sure, you know? sure. So anyway, uh, I did it. I had stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of papers yeah. to the point where I went and said, uh, Brian, when I got a song that I thought was pretty good, I said, take this song, because he was still going on to Motown. Yeah. I said, take this song, this lyric to Barry, yeah. but don't tell him I wrote it, because he knows I can't write songs. Sure, tell him sure. you wrote it. So. He said, okay. So he did that. Mm -hmm. And so Barry, he took the song and he said, uh, well, I said, what did he say, Brian? Because I was just waiting there yeah. at the house. So sure. 14232 Lumpkin Street, where we were, yeah. you know, where we live, where we were residing. Yeah. I said, what did he say? What did he say? He said, well, he said, Brian, you didn't write this. He said, this is like what Janie wrote this. And then yeah. Janie was a very good writer. Sure. So I said, that's what he said? Yeah. I said, wow, I'm on to something there. Yeah. I said, because I know Barry was very, very critical. That mm -hmm. much I knew. And, yeah. and learning when he was teaching me songs, I could tell how critical he was. Sure. I said, wow, I said, maybe I'm on to something there. Mm -hmm. And so a little, you know, maybe a month or two later, I'm still doing it. I said, Barry, Ryan, why don't you, I said, you and Lamont do, you can do melodies very quickly. Yeah. And I said, you're very good at it. Yeah. I said, but you guys, from what I could see, have problems putting the lyrics. I said, it slows you down. Hmm. It's time consuming. Yeah. I said, now, the way that you're putting out melodies, if I wrote the lyric, I said, we could turn out song very quickly. And you did. And that's what we did. Yeah. So he, Brian listened to me and I, he would sit, they would yeah. do the tracks yeah. and then I would get with them and mm -hmm. I could, in my ear, I could tell the structure, how I wanted the structure to mm -hmm. go because I could look and tell the structure, X amount for a verse, X amount for a tag, X amount before it went to the chorus. And the, so I knew the basic structure, you know? Sure. And so I would listen to it. I said, no, 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 I need more time with this. I need more time with that. Mm -hmm. And my brother, we got into some big arguments. Oh, yeah, right. oh <laughs> man, he said, look, he said, man, who cares about no lyrics? He said, yeah. first of all, don't nobody listen to lyrics. He says, he said, they're going to listen to the music and yeah. the rhythm of the song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, he said, the lyrics are the last thing they listen to. I said, Brian, but you got to have the song there. I said, because the song the lyric is still the message. It carries along with the melody. Yeah. I had enough sense and instinct to know that the music, if you blend the words well with the music, mm -hmm. it was like a different language. Yeah. Oh, and you strip them apart, mm -hmm. one, you, they, you, they, 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 they were compatible. Yeah. Okay. And so he listened to me, and sometimes he would still get in arguments. He said, man, I wanted, I wanted my horns here. Don't you hear those horns? Yeah. I said, horns? He said, I wanted this, this rhythm here to come here. He said, can't you hear that? I said, Brian, no, I can't hear that. He was hearing this stuff in his head. Sure. I said, sure. no, I can't hear it. Mm -hmm. I said, all I know is this song's got to make sense. I said, now, this verse, you got, uh, like I said, it's like, it's only, I will talk in terms of lines. Sure. I said, this verse is three lines. Mm -hmm. Now, further than the second verse, it's five lines. I said, no, 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 it's, that's too uh, the, in Bala. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, you got to give me the same amount. Yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. so he, you know, anyway, we, a lot knocked down drying. Oh, oh, okay. But anyway, you know, yeah. it started developing faster. But I could not write songs fast. Mm. I mean, Jenny could whip them out, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Smokey could do them out one, two, maybe yeah. three days, five. Took me three weeks. Really? Yes. I had to work because I'm teaching myself at the same time. Sure. So I'm looking at it and studying it, 
and coming up. Well, with, we're glad you took your time because yeah. it was it yeah. was right. worth the time. Yeah. No, it was to worth take, the time. No yeah. question. Exactly. Was coming up with a pattern. Yeah. And I could look at the pattern, the opening verse, and I used. I remember something I learned in high school called yeah. repeat formation. And, uh, yeah. and it's saying the same thing differently. So I knew how to take the thought and tie it in, tie it in. And then I noticed a lot of people when they wrote songs, it was so disconnected. Yeah. I didn't. I knew better for whatever reason, and I wasn't that good in English. But to me, it was common sense. Yeah. And whatever you know, com composition I learned mm -hmm. in the English, I learned. I knew how to tie those sentences. You know, I knew how to. Do, I knew what the commas meant, and yeah. I knew how to you know tie those thoughts. So by me being consistently good with that, yeah. Barry would listen to the songs, and mm -hmm. he said, "Man," he said, "Okay." He he was surprised. He said because most of the songs he would hear. Yeah. He had to crack them, but mine he didn't. Yeah. You know, well he did one because I wanted to make a. Since Smokey was so good, yeah. I wanted to make a song complicated, which I thought was Smokey. Yeah. And this, and this song was something was Mary Wilson. No, no, Mary Wells was singing this song. Uh, I, I can't remember his song. Mm. Good, it's about uh, 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 two, 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 two lovers. Two lovers. Two of them? He said no, two of us. Two. I, 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 met, I, had, I had two lovers. Yeah, two. That's exactly. the song. Two lovers by Mary and, Wells. And, and, uh, and it wasn't the same. Two lovers that wasn't the same. Gotcha. First lover was there, and the second lover was there, something like that. Yeah, but it was complicated. Yeah. Could well, be because Barry had, Smokey had something like this. Right. But I'm trying to make him pop. And Barry listened, and he looked, and he said, well, yeah, that's too complicated, Eddie. That's too complicated. I said, okay, I, I, I simplify. Yeah. I simplified. He looked at mm, still too complicated. Anyway, they put the song on the B side, but yeah. it was not that much, you know. So I mean, there there are so many hits we can go through. Obviously, we don't have the whole day today. Unfortunately, I'd love if we had the whole day, but you know, there are so many hits to talk about. I mean, early on, you had Heat Wave, right, right. with Martha and the Vandellas. You're a wonderful one, okay, for Marvin. Man, you're right, Marvin. I mean, what what were those early days like? I mean, working with Marvin and working with Martha. Like, what what was what was the dynamic in the studio? You know, you Lamont and Brian. You know, working working together. Oh, the dynamic was real. It was really great. I mean, we got along with everybody, and uh, yeah, and it was easy to deal with these people because they had to listen to what the producer wanted. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because that was Barry's uh, signature thing. Listen to the producers and you do what the producer says. Mm. You know, Who anyway. was doing a lot of the coaching? Was it everyone doing coaching? No. Or was it you and no. Lamont doing a lot of the coaching? No. When you say coaching, what do you mean? Like, you know, when, when you're in the studio, you know, um, you know, who was giving a lot of the... Uh, oh, my brother. Well, yeah, we... we brother. Yeah, well, oh, I see what you Lamont said. Would do yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, but mainly because I would Bryant, take it. Yeah. Because Bryant, the thing about it, once yeah. again, he had this exceptional year. Mm -hmm. And so when Bryant went into a studio, he didn't have arrangements. He had chord sheets. Mm. He went down and he, he knew the instruments he wanted to use. Yeah. So he would go down in the studio mm -hmm. and uh, he would tell and instruct each, each musician how what he wanted and wow. how he wanted it. Yeah. You know? And, uh, and then sometimes, if, if, if Lamont wrote the song, the melody was responsible for that melody, yeah. then he would do it, you know. Mm. But for the most part, my, my brother would do it because, see, my brother had the one ability that Lamont or I did not have. Mm -hmm. He could listen to a song and tell what was wrong with it mm, and how to make it right quickly. He could go transcend to this chord, to this to chord. To just piece it all and together. Tie it together it up, yeah. And tie that together yeah, wow. quickly. And he knew, he said, no, 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 this is not flowing right. You know, because wow. Lamont had a tendency to do songs, but they weren't attached. Because in pieces, he, almost in pieces, right? Well, they weren't in pieces, but his, but what he would do, mm. he would listen to melodies, and he, he had a lot of movement, and they would make certain changement quickly, and Bryant didn't think that one flowed to the other. Right. Got it. Bryant tongue, was right. into that. Mm -hmm. you know, just like I was into structure of the song, I could feel that and hear yeah. that. Bryant was the same way when he hit the melody. You know, he could hear the melody and know how that mm -hmm. one tied into the other. What made this part stand out yeah. over this part? Mm. You know, he was extremely good with that. 
So I want you guys to talk about, obviously, the Supremes. You had 10 number one hits with the mm -hmm. Supremes. Okay. Can you talk about getting that first number one for uh, Where Did Our Love Go? Just the, the feeling of that at that time, well, getting that first number one. What did that mean to you guys? Well, first of all, we had another record before then. We had the record before then mm -hmm. that was um, when the love light started shining through his eyes, mm -hmm. little dinky dink. And well, that's a whole nother story. Sure. Right? But, but we had, my brother and I was battling over that because the title was too long. I said, it doesn't mean how long. I said, it doesn't matter how long a title. Mm -hmm. The music breaks it up. It yeah. causes it to flow. Long mm -hmm. So that was a whole nother thing. Yeah. Once again, these, uh, these, these battles that he and I would have. So yeah. he would let me, I mean, I would in, in, eventually win the battle because of a <laughs> difference. Because yeah. well, you know, I was like a little older than him, and he okay. would he and I argued more. Uh -huh. I would argue the hardest, so uh -huh. he would just he get tired. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> he got tired. He of got it. tired of he it. He get he wanted to go through it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. And so, so as long as I can put up with the first two or three rounds, if I can yeah. tolerate that, it wore him down because he said, "Is the heck with it." Yeah, yeah. And so anyway, <laughs> and. The Supremes at that time, they would, everybody was trying to get a hit record on the Supremes. You know? And they had built up this repetition as the no hit Supremes. That's right, that's right, yeah. And uh, so they, he figured, so somebody said, well, maybe, maybe the Hollands could do something, you know. Yeah. And so and we got their first record, it was a hit. Mm -hmm. They got on the Dick Clark show. Yeah. Okay. So uh, they were starting. So we did another record. I can't think of that second record. It wasn't that good. It didn't. It didn't, I don't think it did. It was like, I can't remember that second record. Mm, I can't remember. But it was, it was just like yeah. almost like yeah. an introvert. Mm. You know, it, it didn't quickly do anything. Do so yeah. we started working on this other song. Uh, and it was a moody song, and I love the feeling of it. Mm. And I said, you know what? I said, uh, let, I said, let Mary sing this song. They, they looked at me, Brian, Lamont. Mary, Mary didn't say, I said, no, no, mm. no, no. This song is sensuous. Mm -hmm. I said, the melody, the way the melody is flowing, all it takes is a lyric that is sensuous and intimate sounding, sexy. You know, I said, gotcha. I said, anybody that can sing this can get a hit on this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they said, well, I said, I said, Diana sings too high. Because I could, I could always just hear her voice was, to me, somewhat piercing. Sure. And so we argued back and forth, and I could see Bryant was not going for it, Lamont was not going for it, <laughs> yeah. Mary is not the singer. I said, get Mary. He said, Dinah is the singer. Mm. Dinah, and they thinking, are you crazy? Yeah. I said, and I looked at him, looked, I said, I tell you what, Yeah. can you lower the key? Can you put this in a lower key? And so he looked, and Brian said, yeah, I'm going to put it in a lower key. I said, fine, we'll do that. Yeah. So I just wanted her voice, I wanted that sexy sound. Yeah. So when he cut the track, mm -hmm. I started just working with the lyric, just milking it, just putting together, not trying to write a great song, yeah. but trying to write a song that was sensuous, sexy, mm -hmm. that made her sound longing. That's all Mission I was accomplished. After. You know what Mission I mean? Mission accomplished. So we done yeah. that. Diana Ross, on the yeah. other hand, yeah. didn't like the way mm. I was showing her the song. Mm. Because when I was singing the song, teaching her the song, mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of, you know, like a little riffs, but I was just curly going through it first so she can get a feel about the, 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 the cadence of the song. Sure. I didn't want her to deliver it that way, but you know, so she's all these riffs and slurs I was doing quickly going through. She said, I want to sing it like you. I said, no, 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 no. You can't <laughs> sing the song like that. Oh man, so she didn't like that. She yeah. battled me for a minute. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to call Barry, you know? Yeah. And I looked at her. I said, well, I said, I tell you what, there's the telephone. Yeah. You can call Barry if you want to. I said, but when you called him, tell him to come over here and take you to the studio too. Mm. So she looked at me, <laughs> she was in awe because everybody was afraid of Barry. Mm -hmm. I was never afraid of Barry. Yeah. You know, because I felt that if you're dealing with a person that you respect mm -hmm. and you're dealing with a person that you knew was intelligent. Yeah. You, there's no, nothing to fear if you're coming to them with logic and reason. Right, right. That's right. That's, That's how it. I looked at it. You Just know. be straightforward. Yeah. Right. And, right. and, and, if, and as long as you're not trying to insult the person mm -hmm. and you're telling them 
some, you know, anyway, something mm -hmm. that's going to tax the intelligence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, so anyway, so she looked at me out there. So anyway, she conceded to that. Yeah. Took in the studio. And uh, she sang it in a, in a very dry attitude. Mm. Not voice. Because she had the most beautiful voice. Mm. She had a natural, sensuous voice. Mm -hmm. Anything she would sing, if you put in those keys and do those certain melodies and movement, she's going to sound sensuous. Mm -hmm. It's just in her voice. Yeah. So she was in a bad mood. Yeah. And so my brother was the engineer at the time. Mm -hmm. So as she was singing, real dry in her attitude, yeah. not voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, my brother looked at me, he says, I said, don't stop her, don't stop her. Cause he said, is this what you, he was looking at me as if to say, is this what you want? I said, sure. I said no, 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 don't stop her, don't stop her, let her go. Yeah. So she went through the whole song, mm -hmm. right to the end. She got to the end and she said very dryly, is this what you want? Yeah. I said, it's exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. I said, thank you. Wow. I think she was surprised that I wouldn't even yeah. accept it. But the way she sounded mm -hmm. was exactly what I was looking for. Wow, that's that's a great story. Yeah. And you know, in, in 19, uh, 1964, you also had Baby, I Need Your Loving by the Four Tops. Mm -hmm. You had Baby, Loved by the Supremes. Come See About Me. You had How Sweet It Is to Be Loved by You. Any special memories from 60, uh, 64? Just I mean, all those hits? And well, that's not so much a special memories because, again, I was still learning. Yeah. So I would write from my own experience. Uh, own personal experience. Yeah, you know how you know how sweet it is. I was writing about this this new uh, person One of my I favorites. found. One of my favorites. And then I was writing about her because she was a very unique personality. So yeah. I just wrote it about her, mm -hmm. the way she was. I mean, I never did tell it was about her. Yeah. But uh, you know that that's what I did. I wrote my own experience, mm. not the experiences of others. Now yeah. Lamont came up with a lot of titles. Yeah. He wrote it, the titles he came up from his experience. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't write the song from his experience because I didn't know what it was. I just heard the title. Yeah. If everybody likes the title, cut the song, yeah. give it to me. Mm -hmm. And I did it my mm -hmm. way. Okay. That's sure. all I knew. Right, right. Yeah. Now a point, let me put this point. Yeah. The song title, How Sweet It Is to Be Loved by You, yeah. was a title that Jackie Gleason had. Because mm -hmm. Jackie he, Gleason would always say, how, how sweet, sweet it is. is. Is that right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. and, and how that's how we came, that's how we came on his it. TV program. Wow. Yeah, now. Oh, that's great. He sued us. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. He sued us, yes. and um, he, 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 he couldn't win because uh, you can't copyright no title. Well, I'm so glad you guys got off on that. Yeah, that's right. Good. That's good. <laughs> so, a couple more things. I can't help myself. Sugar Pie Honey, uh -huh. one of my favorites. Okay, you said he, that about the last one. No. They're all they're all my favorites. <laughs> you sound like, you know, I'm, you sound like me now. I'm just uh -huh. a music lover and, I, okay. and a lover of you know Good. what you guys right. have done. Um, yeah, I, I get I get everybody I interview. It's always this yeah. is my favorite. Yeah, That's my I favorite. Know, they're I probably understand. sick of me, but yeah. you know. But but anyway, uh -huh. um, any special memories? Any any memories of Levi Stubbs? I mean, what a singer, right? Oh, I great, mean, oh, greatest. You know, and yeah. I don't think he gets a lot of credit. You know, oh, but. Um, Oh and yes, he does. Yeah, what, what are your what are your singer, what are your singer. memories from back then, working with the Four Tops and and you know? Well, he knows. Oh, more. see, he wants me to. Miss. Well, see, yeah, because he dealt see, with the now. And when so. this is heard, they're gonna say, "See, Eddie he did it again. <laughs> he did it again. He never but, gave but Brian the a chance." Is, <laughs> yeah. He dealt with the singers to help them sing the songs. You did a lot of vocal production. Right, right, right. Yeah, I uh, I taught him a song. Right. I could listen, and I knew their voices. I could tell what it took yeah. for them to deliver this, whatever the song was, mm -hmm. because I would would choose a song, and uh, we basically we had a the togetherness on that yeah. that fit them, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I I knew he was a great singer, yeah, and just like I told a, a, a Duke. I said, you know, and this was after Levi was passing. I said, you yeah. know, Duke. I said, uh, I said Levi really had a. Um, a I said he, he he was irritated with me a lot mm -hmm. of times, and I said I, I said I don't know whether you knew it or not. I said I never told anybody, mm. but I could sense it. And he said, no, 
He told me. But you brought the best out of him. Right, that's what he said. He said, he told me. I said, oh, he did? He said, yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, man, this guy keeps putting these songs up. Yeah. The higher key and straight it. He said, bah, 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 man, I'm tired of singing this song in this key. And bah, bah. But it wasn't, he didn't realize, it wasn't, it wasn't me that was doing it. My brother would choose a key. He thought the instrumentation would be, right. would be the strongest. Mm -hmm. He thought I was doing it because I could sing in those keys. I mean, I could easily go from one note to high C. Mm -hmm. It was just a sure. normal voice sure. structure. And so, and so and he said, well, he said, but he said, i tell you one thing. He said, that boy know what he's doing, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, one more that I want to bring up, and I'll, and we might end with this, but this old heart of mine by the eyes of Oh, Bruce, wow, yeah. What a song. Okay. What a song. Starting, <laughs> starting with the intro, okay. the, just the drums okay. coming in right away. <laughs> How did that song come about? What was it like working with a young Ron Isley at the time? And any any favorite or special memories from, well, from that session? For, well, first of all, I didn't think that much of that song. Really? No. Wow. Ron Isley did. I thought it was, I said, Ron, I said, we got a song because they were at Motown. They wanted mm -hmm. us to do a song. Yeah. I said to him, I said, well, Ron, I said, uh, Ronnie, I said, um, I said, this is, I said, this is, uh, this is a hit song. Yeah. I said, I don't think it's a smash song. I said, but it's a hit, yeah. you know. You know, because Brian, if he didn't think his song had a chance to go top 10 and up, mm -hmm. to him, it wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't good. Mm -hmm. That's what he would always mm -hmm. go for. And he had the ability to hear those songs. He would throw away more songs than he wrote. Mm -hmm. Really? Because he wanted oh, yeah. a song that had whatever those ingredients he was looking for. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, we cut that song, and uh, I, I didn't, uh, yeah, I'm going to show you how much, little I thought of it. I tried to get Sylvia Moy. to One do of the, the co-writers. Yeah, to do the lyric with me. She yeah. couldn't come up with anything. Yeah. You know, because at this time, I was taking over a and mm -hmm. and I wanted her to, I wanted to try to, to give, have more time for myself mm -hmm. since I spent so much time writing lyrics. Yeah. So we worked on a song, worked on a song, and and couldn't come up with anything. Yeah. I was looking for her to come up with something. She didn't come. She didn't feel nothing, and I didn't feel. So anyway, I went back to. I think we must have worked about five or six hours. Nothing. Yeah. And I was in my house at that time, and I can remember. The, my wife was jealous as hell. Mm -hmm. I can remember that. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't say anything, but I could look at it and tell. Because yeah. I was spending so much time. Sylvia was a nice looking girl, really. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's a nice looking girl. Mm -hmm. And I, we were laughing and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And so I wouldn't do that with my wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's so, interesting. You didn't like that song, huh? You no. didn't like this one. So, you like it today. I love it. You love it. Yeah, so <laughs> what I did was this. Yeah. We couldn't get anything done, so I went back. Yeah. The next day, and I listened to the song again, not giving up on it. So I started writing, writing, yeah. writing, writing. So that's all of a sudden it started coming to me, coming to me. And I remember Sylvia came in to the door when she heard me singing the song down. Yeah. She came into the office and looked at me and smiled and whatever. Mm -hmm. And because of that, and because she was so gracious, mm -hmm. I said, well, I said, I'm going to put her name on it anyway. Yeah. And that's what I did. Yeah. You know. That was nice of you. And so, yeah. <laughs> had no idea. Ronnie thought it was great. Yeah. Thought it was a great song. So. Yeah. But he was right, I was wrong, by yeah. the way. <laughs> so lo looking back, just wrapping up, all the hits, all the memories, all the music, you know, this, is, this music has been the soundtrack to many of our lives, you know? We've laughed, we've cried, we've gotten married, all God these people man. all over the world. Had babies. You know? Had babies. <laughs> not me, not yet. But, but, um, but lots of others, yes. Uh -huh. what, what does it all mean to you, looking back? Well, the only thing it means to me is that I accomplished what I set out to do, and that was to have success to make money. Because yeah. that's what was my goal. It was not to be a good songwriter. Yeah. Now, I mean, well, that's not true. I want to be a good songwriter. Yeah. But I wasn't trying to be a great songwriter, mm -hmm. OK? I just want to be able to make money, and my thing was this: I had to write these songs well enough. Yeah. And I and I would I tell my brother every now and then I said, Brian, if we if we can get one person yeah to record these songs and it's a hit yeah I said, man, that's 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 a job well done as far yeah. as I'm concerned. 
Sure. So it, it went far beyond my expectation. Right. Yeah. How about you, Brian? Same thing. I never thought these songs would last mm. 20 years, 30 years. 50 years. 50, now it's 60. Incredible. Because and they're still going on. But you know what? To be perfectly honest, yeah. I didn't appreciate it. Like, <clears throat> look, if I'm in the car yeah. and I'm playing music, don't play the Motown song. You can play somebody else's song. Yeah. Not ours. Yeah. I did not want to hear it. Right. I slaved too much trying to get right. these songs, working on these songs, yeah. so, you know, sweating bullets and everything yeah, right. to make these songs right, you know. Yeah. I didn't want to hear this stuff, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I would tell people, oh, let me hear this song, so I remember Springs. I said, I don't want to hear that. I don't yeah. want to hear But I like to hear the old Drifters records, mm -hmm. the old Clive Mack Fatter records, mm -hmm. old Shirelles. I mm -hmm. love them. Sure. Love that group, mm -hmm. you know. So I would listen to that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I just felt very fortunate that I was able mm -hmm. to, to do that. But you know, we did it all in a very, very short time, yeah. looking back. And the fact of the matter is, I don't think, see, we never fully reached our potential. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I disagree, but no, we did. Looking back, I mean, from me, from yeah, a consumer from, standpoint, oh, yeah. from a music I, I, lover we didn't reach, standpoint, we didn't but reach. I get where you're coming yeah, from. Yeah, no, I, I know we didn't read because yeah. it was so much more mm -hmm. in Bryant, right. so much more in yeah. Lamont yeah. Yeah. than was we ever tapped. Yeah. Right. You see what I mean? It really well, I mean, was. I can tell you just from you know musician you know from a musician mm -hmm. standpoint i'm sure there are people all around the world that are musicians mm -hmm. that would kill to have what you guys <laughs> so so i know i get your point but you know yeah. i mean but see let me tell you in my opinion we had a unique situation yes. i knew brian was extremely good i knew lamont was extremely good yes. and i knew that was good okay yes. i didn't think extremely you know yeah. but good enough because yeah. i could i could put it together i could make mm -hmm. the songs come alive yeah. even more so than uh, just having the instrumentation, the melody, sure, as my sure. brother said. It was many, many, many years, you got to yeah. understand, so 30 years went by before my brother even complimented me on writing these songs. Wow. Before Lamont even complimented yeah. me on writing these songs. Yeah. And I almost was looking and, what's, is it, am I doing good, guys? Yeah, is yeah, is yeah, it what yeah, you want? Yeah. I would ask my brother, because yeah. he was really the head <laughs> producer, yeah, and right. head writer. And he said, yeah, 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 it's good, it's good, it's good. Said, you know. So years later, he said I was a genius. Yeah. And he sounds so great. Right. He sounds so great. I said, man, I started laughing. Yeah. I said, man, get out of here, man. Yeah. Yeah. I All said, come years. on. And then and, and well, the, same the, thing, guys. the same thing with Barry. Yeah. He told me years later. Because before I would do the song, I said, mm -hmm. he said, well, I want, Eddie, I want this. Can you finish this song on the, on the Supremes? Blah, blah, mm. blah. I said, yeah, Barry, I can. I said, he said, when can you have it ready? I said, it would take me two or three weeks. He said, two or three weeks? He said, on these ditties? <laughs> <laughs> and so mm. the other producers heard him say that. They started laughing. Yeah. They started calling me, said, King Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, on behalf of all the music lovers okay. all over the world, we want to thank you for this timeless music oh, that good. we'll continue to cherish, oh, we'll continue uh, to listen to it and uh, love it mm -hmm. for generations to come. Thank so you. I just want to thank you okay. so much My for pleasure. coming on the My show. Pleasure. Thank been, you. Appreciate it. It's been it. such an honor. Thank you, thank you guys. Yeah.